Let's see what it does. Holy shit. Are you fucking kidding me? What? Hi guys. Probably look like rubbish, <laughs> but I'm just jumping on very quickly because obviously we've just had the new update to Lightroom Classic. The update introduces Generative Remove, powered by Adobe Firefly. So I said this would probably come at some point because obviously they have it in Photoshop. So I wanted it natively in Lightroom and we now have it. So let's jump in Lightroom and we'll try it out. This is my literally first time. I've not looked at any literature on it, anything. So I'm not even sure how it works. So how good is it if we can stay in Lightroom and not have to go out to Photoshop save it as a tiff and then bring it back so you know the problem with obviously having it as a tiff is uh, so it's asking us to update my um catalog so oh, that's what i'm gonna have to do so 13.3 so upgrade so we'll upgrade the catalog hopefully it doesn't take too long yeah so the problem with a tiff is obviously it's then sort of flat um once you've got your preset on and then if you want to make any changes you're a bit uh, so hopefully the way they do it now in Lightroom, once I do a generative AI fill to get rid of a supplier, for example, it just creates that as a possibly a mask, which would be perfect because now I've still got full accessibility to the raw image. Um, so yeah, let's just, I'll jump ahead once this catalog's bloody finished upgrading and I'll see you in a moment. Okay guys, it's uh, that took about, I want to say about 10 minutes. Welcome to Lightroom Classic. Generative remove, early access. Easily remove unwanted objects and distractions, even on complex backgrounds with generative remove. Uh, there's also tethered capture support for Sony cameras, lens blur enhancements, which never use. Adaptive presets to blur the background. Yeah, never using that. Filter by exported images. Oh, so that's a bit new then. Uh, so let's have a quick check what else is there so uh just make sure you can see this on obs <laughs> lovely um right so we've got that generative remove aesthetic blur to your photos if you want to do that tether capture filter by exported images filter your photos based on whether they are exported or not exported ah oh, so it's a of another metadata filter uh spot for new cameras lenses and what have you right so i've got this prime example of my good friend Aaron from Just Press Play. Um, this obviously happens. I get in front of videographers. Videographers get in front of me, you know. That's one of them things. But usually I would have to do put the preset on this and then take it into Photoshop, flatten it down as a TIFF, bring it back, and then I would keep the raw file just in case I ever want to edit it. I'm hoping that with the new generative remove we can keep the raw, full raw functionality um i'm just gonna get rid of this because i don't need it goodbye all right so i assume if bear with me because i have literally not looked at this i want to do oh here we go so generative remove uh Turn off generative remove to work more efficiently on small blemishes or dust spots. This mode also works without an internet connection. Okay. So it's just like this, the quick removal. So you just press Q to open that up. So before we have remove, so which is what we had before. So obviously if I just wanted to do that, that's exactly how it used to work. Obviously I know I've done a bad job there. So all we need to do is press generative AI. You can create in ways with generative AI. Agree. Uh, so this is obviously early access and you've also got object aware. Automatically detect brushed objects to be removed. So I'm going to click that as well. Um, and there's also tool overlay for visualize spots, etc. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to try and draw around Aaron. And then... So it's going to have to interpret the scene for trees, leaves. Obviously, I'm going to get go right through this tree trunk here. And then let's just see what that does. So this is all generative AI. Oh, so that's the object selection. So that's pretty good. And then can I 
add. So if I press add, and let's just add this bit at the back. So if I press apply now, generating. Yeah, and it also has the variations. So go to variations to review more options. If this is going to be like a game changer, if it's built into Lightroom, um, you know, it's just like, how much more do we need? Almost done. So it's a little bit slow. Um, you know, and over time, this will hopefully get even better. Oh, my word. That is pretty darn good. I can see a little patch here. Um, so where is revisions? Ah, uh, hey, variations. So I can click through little arrows. Wow. And it's still a raw file. That is pretty darn good, isn't it? Um, probably, probably that one. I'm uh, quite liking that. Wow, that's unbelievable. Right. So before, so you can just press before and after, just like you took out a spot. That's really cool. Um, oh, game changer. Now this is built into Lightroom. So again, I'm just let's just do a quick edit on this, actually. Um, but that is amazing. That's all on a raw file. And again, I'm just... That is a game changer. Um, I don't think there's anything else where I would need to do it. Um, should we try? <laughs> obviously, totally unedited. Develop. And then, so I've obviously just got a walk in sequence here. If this does this, I will be impressed. So let's just go around. So you can be quite loose with your selection because we've got the object aware feature enabled so that is basically going to look at what's in my selection and go right what's the object he's trying to select so it should detect that i'm trying to select these humans so that's a very very loose rubbish selection there so it's not very tight at all won't let go and then it should create a red mask yeah, not that impressed with that to be fair It would be cooler if they had it so you can just press add detect subject um or something like that but anyway let's press apply and let's see what it does holy shit are you fucking kidding me what oh my f holy shit that is like they weren't even there It's like seamless. <laughs> what on earth? I mean, I was impressed when Generative AI came out in Photoshop, but to see it in Lightroom is just, wow, guys, come on. Like, there is now literally no reason on God's green earth to be leaving things like fire exit signs and stuff in. I mean, they were easy to get rid of anyway, but like you just get an errand person that you don't want in the shot. Bosh, gone. Like, wow. That is unbelievable. The, let's do one more example. I know a particular shot where I thought about taking it into Photoshop and getting rid of a person just to make the photo look better. So if I go to Carrie and Dean, and I'm going to just two star, just because I know I, I, I had it as a blog select. So I think it was this image here. So it's a lovely image of uh, Shannon wiping a tear. But then the girl on the left, her facial expression isn't the best and what have you. And I thought about taking that into Photoshop and removing her. Um, but let's just... Have a go. Right, so let's just select her. So this is obviously a little bit more intricate because it's a person layered on an, another person. So her hand crosses the other person at the back there. So it'll be interesting to see what it does here. If this removes her, 
score and that's I'm done. Apply. Oh, I've left a little bit there on the hair. Let's see what it does with it. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> oh my god. How crazy is that that's generated a person though? And I tell you what, I've watched this generate AI people before on Photoshop and that is getting a hell of a lot more realistic. That's very, very real. Um, so yeah, didn't do a very good job there. So let's try refresh and see what else it gives us. Yeah, so again, it's done a pretty piss poor job on that one. But the one where it was a clean slate, like the, the couple on the trees, was just like, I, I dropped my jaw. I was, I was quite speechless. Um, yeah, so obviously that does not work. So let's just reset that. Um, but it was worth a go, wasn't it? Um, I wonder if there's anything else for... Oh, this is a prime example. I mean, I did this before. So if I go to develop and if I undo the remove tool so you'll see there was a dog leader so i took that out with just the bog standard remove tool but it should be even easier now so if i go through and just take do a rough selection i mean this is just going to be absolute game i've said it a few times on already on the video it's going to be a game changer to have this built into lightroom All right let's let go of that yeah, that's fine. Apply. Now I'm going to zoom in after this and I want to say, is there a difference in visual quality from the bit I've took out to the rest of the image, which is obviously like 7,000 pic... Oh my, holy shit and God. What the fuck? Jesus. That is unbelievable. Wow. I don't have the file, the hard drive plugged in, so I'll just. Oh my god! It is literally copied my grain structure and everything. So this grain is added by me afterwards, and it is cut. What? So down here is where it was. It has literally copied the grain structure and, and like, whoa. I'm absolutely blown away. Absolutely blown away, guys. Whoa. I'm going to leave it at that. Have fun with generative AI in Lightroom. If you've got old images that you feel could be improved by just taking a person out or, God, anything, have at it. Uh, have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodaloos.